Hello everyone, I'm Catherine Decina Saplin and welcome to Book Dissect, where I take the best and worst of books so that you can be a better writer. Today I'm dissecting Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. Ayul. There's too many vowels in her last name, I don't know how to pronounce it. So a little warning before I start, if you haven't read this book, which was first published in the 80s, what, what are you doing with your life? This will probably have spoilers, so if you still want to read it without spoilers, maybe read it first and then come back to this video. That being said, if you're interested in this book, there's a link in the description below for your convenience. Alright, so this book is about a girl named Ayla. She is a pre-human. Because of events and stuff, she ends up living with the clan of Neanderthals. There are two things that really stand out in this book that make it a good book. And the first is, this is the perfect example of writing what you know and if you don't research it. This whole book takes place in prehistory and the amount of research that Jean did for this book is evident in her writing because there's nothing that I read based off of what little information that I actually know about how things were back in that time period where I felt like this is out of place or this was wrong and this is so important because that aspect really pulled me into the story. Like I felt like I was part of this tribe with Ayla living in Neanderthal times. Like if you want an example of job well done, you should read this book. And the second thing that really popped out to me was the tense choice. Typically when you have historical fiction or even some fantasy novels, when it deals in the past, you'll see them written in the past perfect, but this was written in simple past, and I think this was an excellent choice because it made the writing more snappy. Jean does lots and lots and lots and lots of detail. For me personally, take this with a grain of salt, but I think if it had been written in the past perfect, that the description would have dragged a lot more. If I'm honest, there were some scenes where it just like dragged on and on and on and on and on and the book could have done without them. Talking about dragging, one of the things that really popped out to me, and this started in the first chapter, was she broke some of the literary rules that you're not supposed to break and honestly the way that she broke them really didn't do anything to the story. One thing that I read a lot was start. So she started this, he started that and it didn't add to the story, it just, it slowed it down. Another thing was this suddenly happened and then this suddenly happened and then it sort of broke the magic because I knew that something was happening and so the surprise was lost. And then the third thing was the telling of emotion and I don't understand why her editor left this in or what was going on when she was writing but a lot of the time she would say what the emotion was. So so-and-so is angry. But then she would go and describe the emotion. So their knuckles were white or their brows were like down, you know, the way that you're supposed to describe emotion, except she started off by saying the emotion already. And so it just felt like overkill because I already knew what the emotion was. I was told it. I think a fix for that would have been to either get rid of the description or better yet, just get rid of the sentence that says she was angry. And these little things sort of made the text really drag. But aside from those three things, the story as a whole was very interesting. I would say Jean is very good at describing things. And if you want an example of how to effectively describe scenes and give emotions, then you really should consider picking up this book because it's done really well. There's this one scene in the book that is describing the men in the tribe making tools. And albeit it is sort of a scene that could have been taken from the book because it really doesn't add anything to the overall story. It's a very interesting scene and I think this also reflects just the amount of research that she did for the book because I felt like I was learning how to make this tool from the book. And another scene that really stuck out to me was the birthing scene was sort of told through the point of view from Ayla, who's the little girl. When I was reading it, I didn't exactly know what was going on, but from the description, you knew something serious was happening. 
but you didn't know what and so it was this tiny little mystery within the book and it was when you finally figured it out it was like an aha moment and I really enjoyed that scene and it's such a simple thing that happened in the book but it was really well done. And one thing that I want to point out is the characterization of the characters. And I would love to know your own feedback in the comments below, but I've read from multiple sources that giving your characters distinctive features or character traits make them more memorable to the reader. And so when it comes to the characters in the book, and there is a lot of them, Ayla, she's the outsider, Isa, that's her stepmother, she's a medicine woman, Preb, who is the magical religious figure, Uba, which is her foster sister, Browd, which is her foil, Bro, which is the father and the leader of the tribe. But when it comes to the other characters, I know there's more and I know I'm forgetting them, but I don't remember them because they didn't have any specific characterization or trait about them. So I think that's one thing that you should take and think about when you're making your characters, especially if they're secondary characters that aren't the main, because you don't want people to confuse your characters. And um, to give an example of this, there's a part in the book where somebody dies and it wasn't the character that I thought it was because when I was reading later I realized that the person I thought had died was actually alive and it was somebody else. That moment sort of broke the magic for me and made me disengage from the book because I was really confused because I was like, who is this character that died? Because I didn't know who it was. So that's important. So if you read this book, I'd love to know your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. Or hey, maybe you saw the movie and you can make a comparison of the movie to the book because hey, I saw both and I actually thought the movie was pretty good. I'm sure that you could find it on YouTube maybe. It's an old movie. I think it was released in the 80s, late 80s, because I think Clan of the Cave Bears was written in 81. Holy crap, that book is older than me. Wow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the red button to subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications which YouTube still won't tell you when my new videos come out. So be sure to come back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't scenes may apple scenes. Today I am dissecting Clan of the Cave. Today I'm dissecting Clan of the Bear Cave. Bear Cave. <laughs> Goodness, I cannot speak today. I don't know what my issue is. <sighs> Everything is like a freaking tongue twister today. Why?